Hello everyone, Fountain Pens writing here with a new Fountain Pen review. Today we are going to take a look at one of the most classic of Fountain Pens, the Parker Duo for Centennial Big Red. Let's start! With Parker Duo Fold models there are many types of packaging available. It depends on the price and edition. I took the Centennial Duo Fold choosing the model with the most economical packaging. The pen arrives in this nice grey box where you can see the Parker logo and the name on the top and on the spine there are two nice royal charters for the manufacturer of the pen. Open the box and there is the pen and under the bed we have two cartridges and there should have been the user manual which I do not receive. This is a cartridge converter fountain pen and uses a proprietary Parker converter which I consider much better than the standard international converter. We will take a look at the converter in a minute. Before that, let's take a look at the pen. The Parker Dwarf of Centennial Big Red is the classic of the classic of the fountain pens. It is made in France and it resembles the vintage Dwarf of Centennial Big Red with slightly differences. The pen has a flat top shape with the cap being straight and the barrel remains straight up to this point and then tapers down slightly. Cap and barrel are made of a reddish orange resin which has a distinctive feel. It feels more like ebonite than resin. In the body there is a nice engraving which improves the overall design of the pen and in my opinion allows this pen to stand out from other classic pens. On the cap finial there is a metal insert stamped with the Ace of Spades logo and the name Duofold, which is very elegant and almost royal. The end cap is made of black resin and is separated from the cap by the classic Parker arrow clip, which has a small band under the end cap. Then we have a white band, which shows the name Parker stamped on it and the name Friends. A medium step down to the barrel which is separated from the bottom by this metal ring and the end of the pen is made of the same brick resin as the top finial. The cap unscrews with one and half rotation and at least with this model it never lines up with the engraving on the barrel. But under the cap we have the crown jewel. The nib, a proprietary 18k gold two-tone nib with the same Ace of Space logo on it, which looks really sharp. Made in-house by Parker. Look at it. It is one of the most beautiful nib I own. And here the Parker feed made of plastic with a M for medium. There is a metal band at the bottom of the section, which is made of the same black resin as the cap finial and the bottom hand of the pen. And the shape of the section is very comfortable just the right length, weight and shape you can get from a fountain pen. I have to say that for me this contrast between the black resin of the section and finials and the reddish orange of the bottle and the cup gives the pen a really sharp overall appearance, much more classic than other duofold models that have the same material. By unscrewing the section we have this particular converter which is a little bigger than the standard international better made and has a small o-ring that allows the airflow to work better than the other standard international converters. Now it's time to compare this pen with other fountain pens. The Duofold Centennial is a normal size pen and uh, it is about the same length as the Platinum 3776 and the Lamy Safari when it is capped. Uncapped the pen becomes a full size pen but not much thick or long like oversized pens and therefore it fits very well any kind of hand. The pen can be posed but not particularly deeply and the additional length disproportionates the overall design. As said before, the pen fits very well any kind of hands, thanks to both the sides of the old pen and the section. 
it is very well balanced is it just fits right and like the pen the nib is just right the right smoothness wetness with the right amount of feedback actually the nib was a medium metallic when i received this pen even if i bought it with a rounded medium and it wrote very well with that customization but for me a medium metallic is too hard to use properly so i rounded the tip of the nib as best i could and now I have a medium broad, even if there are still some sweet spots, if I rotate the nib a little bit. Having said that, the nib was and remains super smooth, with a pleasant feedback and a juicy ink flow. As always, for all my writing samples, I use the Waterman Blue to get a consistent comparison between the nibs to see if they are dry or wet, and like I said before, the wetness is just right. It is wet, a little more than normal wet nib, and this helps the fantastic feedback of the pen. The nib is a 18 karat gold nib. It is not hard, but the softness does not come from the flexi design, but from the material used. It is not a flex nib, and it should be used without applying pressure, and letting the nib do its job. You will notice that it is an art, and this improves the overall writing experience. Spoiler alert, this pen is just fantastic. It is just right. Minimal tolerances in its manufacturing, perfect ergonomic design, right dimension, even the converter is above the average and the ink flow and the nib are just like they should be, right. This pen has no issues whatsoever. The design is not flashy, like the material, and all is made to be classic, a fountain pen that resembles the golden age of fountain pens. If you like this type of fountain pens, underrated, classic, suitable for every situation, that just works and it works just right, and you like the reddish orange and the shape, then this is the pen to take in consideration. Now, what is the dark side of this pen? Well, it is not the pen itself, rather than the Parker's cell policy. If you are looking for a duofold centennial, you will be surprised by the huge price differences from the same pen, and a difference that cannot be justified by the more expensive packaging. This pen is sold between 300 and 600 euro or dollars, and you get the exactly same pen. I bought this model on Amazon, uh, therefore I got a different nib uh, uh, to the one I chose, but it, it's fine, plus the medium metallic is even more expensive, paying less than 219 euro, and this VAT included. For this price, I consider the value, brand, history, manufacturing, in-house nib and so on, I got just fair enough. Not the bargain of the century, but a really good price but for more than 400 or even 500 well then you must be really a parker duofold fan but because you can get this pen for half the price i find no justification to pay more than 300 dollar or euro this is my opinion but regardless of the price you get an amazing fountain pen and a piece of history with the parker duofold centennial big red and that's all Thank you for watching this video, if you like it, please consider leaving a thumb up. For the next review, we will take a look at the Lotus Vikrant Dartmoor, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, you won't miss that video. See you soon!